Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show you an extended example of working with the Enchant macro within Harlow 3.3. So we've covered now across a number of videos how we can restyle things within Harlow. We can use the change macro to target names that are associated with hooks, so generally selections of text. Or if we want, we can use the Enchant macro to look for very specific symbols or words or phrases. And we also know now from a previous video that there are four very important name tags within Harlow. Page, everything we're looking at. Passage, the passage content. Sidebar, the sidebar content. And links corresponding to links. We can also combine all these things. That is, we can completely restyle the textual experience, a kind of visual experience of looking at text, by using a set of different enchant macro calls with corresponding changer macros. And as a quick review, changer macros are just macros that produce some type of change. Generally, we've seen things like text style, text size, text color. There are others within Harlow as well that produce some type of change. So we can put all of these together, then use the enchant macro to affect something. And in fact, we saw that in a previous extended example. We created a kind of simple haunting by putting a bunch of text across passages. And then as we move between those passages, we will able to see the use of the enchant macro to change something, target a very particular word, book in that previous example, and then it would move around a little bit. So let's revisit that idea with the new thing we can understand now of the use of page, passage, sidebar, and link, very specific name tags that we can use within Harlow. So notice there's almost no macro usage except this very last line right here that just says display styles. And as a quick reminder, anytime we use display, we can include the contents of one passage and the current one. So notice I'm not using any special symbols, not really using anything other than a single macro usage at the very end of this passage. However, the presentation will be quite different than what we might expect at first glance. So let's jump over to styles. So Styles uses the collapsing white space. So remember, every time we use a macro, it creates a kind of similar line within the passage content. We can collapse all that down by using open and closing curly brackets around what we want to present. And when we do that, we can space out code however we want within those. So I have three different enchant macros right here. The first is looking for the double quotation marks. Second is looking for exclamation mark. And the third affects the entire passage. And as a reminder, when we use name tags within Harlow, they are case insensitive. That is, I can write this with a capital P or a lowercase p, and it would be exactly the same. Targets the entire passage. So first, anywhere there is double quotation marks, it's going to have a textile or fidget. Anytime it's an exclamation point, it's going to sway, and the entire passage is going to be purple. But notice I'm following a trend that I established in a, a several videos ago, previous extended example of separating, if we want, kind of code side and content side. Of course, we don't have to do that. We have lots of symbols available to us within Harlow, create different emphasis and different code effects if we want it. And as well, we can use changer macros, textile, text color, text size, and apply those to particular hooks. But if we'd rather separate things, and again, both approaches are perfectly valid, but if we'd rather separate things a little bit, we can write all of our kind of enchantment stuff in one place and then just display it whenever we need it. That can allow us, if we prefer, to think about code as being one thing and content being another thing. But of course, we can mix them as well. So I've got all of this in styles, all the enchantments I want, and then over here in start, the content, and then of course, this all of these enchantments will be applied to this and we will see that final effect. So if we go to build and play, well gosh, the entire passage is purple, which is what I expect to see. If we pay very close attention every once in a while, these will fidget and the exclamation points will sway back and forth. But notice it creates a really cool visual effect with just a few lines of macros. Using what we know about how we can target the entire passage, or the entire page, sidebar, links, whatever we want to target using those four special name tags, as well as continuing our use, of working with the enchant macro and thinking very particularly about changers, right? Producing some type of change as an effect, applying that knowledge and helping us redesign the visual presentation of content within Harlow. We could use special symbols to create effects, 
we can use hooks if we want to create special effects. We can use variables to create special effects. And we can also now, as kind of a third slash fourth approach, use enchantment to do a very similar thing. Put all of our enchantments in one place, all of our styles or presentations, and then simply include them, or what is called the display macro within Harlow, to display all of that, put it right at the end, and then if we want, again, separate our content from our macros. Again, we don't have to, perfectly valid not to do it, but it allows us the opportunity to think about it. It allows us to imply enchantments once we've written our content. It also allows us, as we start to create more complex projects, by establishing all of our styles in generally one or two places. And this is something this video starts to get us into that I also brought up in another extended example talking about changers. As projects become more and more and more complex, hundreds, thousands, potentially even more than that passages, we start to need, or we start to have a need that is, of wanting to use different styles, different visual presentations. The enchantment macro is incredibly powerful for that purpose. So if we want to kind of establish styles or establish sets of styles that we can then apply, using the pattern I have shown in this video of putting them all in one place right here, establishing them all, and then simply using the display macro to include them can be a really helpful solution for those very large projects with potentially lots of styles, put them in one or two or maybe even three different passages, and then simply display them as needed, including them as the last line or as part of passage content and helping us break up really complex projects into smaller and much more manageable parts. So this has been an extended example of looking at the ways in which we can use all of our knowledge of how the enchant macro works. We can work with name tags, we can work with very specific symbols. Previous example, we've looked at words and phrases, and we can combine all, all that together to, create, to create enchantments on text. Write the text first, write the code second. Again, a second parallel approach that then was shown in far previous videos of instead writing the code first and the content second. We can do both approaches however we want to mix them. Code first, content second, content first, code second, or mix the two as needed. But again, lots and lots of options as we gain knowledge about how Harlow 3.3 works, in particular as we're paying attention to change your macros. Thanks for watching.